There are things in this world which are just constant. The speed of light in a vacuum, the Planck constant, gravitational force, and of course, the original Space Jam website. Created in 1996 to accompany the blockbuster film, this website seemed to capture everything that was fun about the early internet. So the fact it's still up 26 years later in a world of Facebook, NFTs and Truth Social is something of a mystery. And that's exactly why I'm going to discuss it. Ah, 1996. What a place. You can almost smell that autumnal freshness in the air. The unknown, the excitement, the opportunity, it's all out there. And that's probably why Warner Brothers decided it was the time and place to mix basketball stars with Looney Tunes characters, in a move which was seemingly very well placed. Basketball was everywhere in the 90s, from NBA Jam to Bulls vs Blazers, NCAA Basketball, David Robinson's Supreme Court, to name a few, and of course, Shaq Fu. So a film charting the story of Michael Jordan's NBA retirement in 1993 till his 1995 return was bound to turn heads, whether it was fictionalised or not, and that's why people would quickly turn to an internet that was equally as exciting. Just look at this place. For a 90s kid, this was a whole world of entertainment. You could literally spend days here and not get bored. Just look, we've got Windows 95 screensavers, background wallpapers, promotional clips of the film, a quick time VR video of the Jordan Dome, quizzes, a coloring book, information about the film, neat stuff to look at. It's insane how much content there is here, and it really demonstrates how passionate the team who made it were. After all, this is a time when the quality of the website really depended on how much the developers could be asked to do, and it's clear this team had the enthusiasm to do a lot. Just a couple of years prior, in 1994, the web as we know it barely existed, and the idea of a dedicated website for a film was ridiculous. This changed with Stargate, a franchise that was so ubiquitous with geekery that the web seemed a natural fit. But this wasn't a website as we know it, it didn't even have its own domain. Instead, it just sat as a page on MGMUA.com and looked like it cost about three bucks to put together. However, Stargate was a huge success, and its website received a fair amount of traffic. But at this point, studios placed as much value on a movie website as they did a ZX Spectrum film license ten years prior. According to a 2015 Rolling Stone article by Eric Malinowski, it was a Warner Brothers vice president for advertising named Don Buckley who realised its full potential and convinced higher management to allocate a small pot of staff and funds for their next project, Batman Forever. In return, Buckley was gifted a young developer named Dara Lynn Weiss, straight from Time Inc.'s Pathfinder portal. In her 20s, Weiss was still in the process of teaching herself HTML and ASP, but yet by June 1995 had created this magnificent vision. Compared to Stargate, this is a whole new world, filled with gothic dignity and beauty, plus it even had its own domain. It's just a shame then that the accompanying film was a pile of absolute turd. But the fight was now on. By the following month, MGM were splashing species across the web and clearly trying to pick up the pace, offering a clear layout to various interesting links and even a background wallpaper. Really pushing the boat out, guys. And let's put this into perspective. The mid-90s were quickly becoming a battleground for innovative and fun websites. Some were fantastic enough to be featured in various web guides or the Internet for Dummies books, whilst others were created by interns consisting of mainly tiled backgrounds and a few static links, such as the Star Wars trilogy site. A Sith Lord would never have allowed such a wretch of a website to exist. But do you know who would? 
a Lord of Scotland, namely this Lord of Scotland. And I think you'll find that's exactly what I am thanks to sponsor established titles. In fact, thanks to my friend Willie, I've just come here direct from the land of the brave. My land of the brave. Title packs entitle you to at least one square foot of dedicated land on a private estate in Edelston, Scotland. You get a nice shiny certificate with a unique plot number allowing you to see the exact location of your land and importantly it's that land which gives you the official title of Lord or Lady. Historically, Scottish land owners are automatically called Lords or Ladies and that's a custom which still stands to this day. Plus, if you're quick, you'll be able to secure a plot of land right next to mine. Whether you want that or not, though, is entirely up to you, especially given my track record of retro hoarding. Say, that's a nice plot of land there. Be a shame if someone stacked it to the brim with CRTs. Right now, Established Titles is running a significant sale, and if you use the code NERD22, you'll get an additional 10% off. Head to EstablishedTitles.com slash NERD22 to get your gifts now and help support the channel. Buckley knew this was now a serious playground, and so did the world, as ever-increasing numbers of households got connected up to the information superhighway. The explosive growth in the number of people who have discovered the power of the internet for learning, marketing, and just plain having fun has been incredible. And even if they couldn't get on the World Wide Web, websites and even macromedia presentations were now being shipped on cover discs so that every PC owner could explore the latest in film marketing. With a little more convincing, he was able to hire two designers, Michael Tritter, who was excellent at writing copy, and Jen Braun, who was also plucked from Pathfinder, but had been creating websites since her senior school project where she got a B for creating an entire website for the school. For free. And only got a B. God, IT skill sets were underappreciated. Together, they worked on their most ambitious project yet, the 1996 Twister film, a website that created a whole online scenario, warning you about an incoming tornado before throwing you into the Severe Weather Institute Research Lab, where you could take steps to remedy your situation. Which placed them in exactly the right place and time for one of the biggest films that year, Space Jam due for release on the 15th of November, 1996. Initially, the site began with a placeholder, depicting a subway train packed full of Looney Tunes characters, surrounded by a station covered with Space Jam posters. However, due to constraints with HTML spacing at the time and a lack of accepted style sheets, it proved a little too difficult to finalize the design in this fashion. And so, joined by Andrew Stackler working as an intern for Jen, the team embarked on creating the final Space Jam website. But little did they know back then that not only would it be used for a huge marketing push, strewn everywhere they could lump it, it would truly also stand the test of time. Well, I say stand the test of time, but it's really starting to show its age. Back in 1996, you couldn't just play videos directly in your web browser. You had to download them and then use QuickTime or RealPlayer to show you the light. But these days, most computers won't even have the appropriate codecs to play these tiny movies, and if you do, well, you can see how mind-bogglingly small the resolution was. In fact, most of this site might seem incredibly cowboy by today's coding standards, but this was the Web 1.0, running on HTML2 and made up of incredibly crude, but yet effective, techniques. This block here isn't separate linked images as you might expect. This is actually one single GIF and it makes use of an image map. Every link has a set of coordinates on the image, and if you click within them, then you'll be taken to the corresponding area. In its first instance, the site was actually running as a CGI script as well, a method sometimes used in the past that gave flexibility to sites but also meant the code to present 
the site was actually executed on the Warner Brothers servers and then passed to the browser, rather than just being interpreted directly in your browser. The problem is, techniques like this don't transfer well onto archive.org, which is an essential component for making this video. And so really, the best place to explore the website is from the version still hosted. But when you do that, you realize that actually the site has been changed a little through the ages. Rather than an image map, the modern site is made up of traditional links, each with a separate image, but most of everything else remains fairly consistent. Nearly all the spacing is created using tables. Traditionally, these are used to display information to users, like, you know, an actual table, as shown here on the site map. But they were also incredibly useful for placement. For example, I could put a graphic here, have an empty column with a certain width here, and then place another image here. That's essentially how this site is made up, along with blink tags and other easy tricks like single pixel stretched images to make borders, plus a lot of GIFs to add a sense of movement from page to page. But despite being made up of GIFs, heavily compressed JPEGs, tiled backgrounds and frames, God, I miss website frames, it still worked, and importantly, because it's using the absolute basics of HTML, it still renders properly in pretty much every browser today. So much of the site is timeless, but yet it's also incredibly casual, which really highlights how little oversight web teams had back then, mainly in the copy. Posters! Posters galore! Stop destroying bus stops and just download them. They're all here and ready for the taking. The cast, the characters, the players, the tunes. When did Michael Jordan get into acting? How long has Bugs been driving Daffy crazy? Go behind the scenes, one of the most high-tech, high-concept, high-flying films ever made. Learn how megastar Michael Jordan got a big kiss from classic wisecracking hero Bugs Bunny. Watch as Michael Jordan plays basketball against many strange men in green suits and face masks, who never appear in the film. A lot of this copy is a bit low-key fruity. Just what you've been waiting for. Jam junk galore. Go nuts, take it all. And this water bottle photo is clearly more than a bit suggestive. Bugs and Michael share a water bottle. But there are also segments alluding to the original design of a subway station. You've made it! Jam Central Station, the central depository for all things Space Jam. And my personal favorite... Don't jam your computer. Download the screensaver and never again will you need to suffer the indignity of burnt phosphor. It all smacks of being written on the fly with a team who were just trying to make the best of their source material, but with no real direction of what to do with it. And this is true with most film. Heck, most websites of the day. New websites would come, many would be built around fancy new technology known as Flash, but as each of these sites came, others fritted away. Servers were shut down, hosts were moved, domains left to lapse. But yet somehow Space Jam lived on. And so the story ends. No one knows how it lived on, it just did. Right up till now, exactly as it was. Although actually, that myth is complete and utter garbage. It didn't, it changed, and it changed quite a bit. So. Let's see how. Originally, when entering the site, you'd be graced with a picture of Bugs Bunny and Michael Jordan. Bugs was, of course, co-star of the film, but also hot property. Back then, Warner Brothers considered Bugs to be a cooler, funkier version of Mickey Mouse and tried to promote the living heck out of him even opening up a merch store in New York to coincide with this film. This intro then leads you straight into the Index page. But just a couple of years later, in February 1998, you first land on a page with lots of other Warner Brothers locations. The Tune Squad poll, Send a Web Card, Acme City, 
This is not the original Space Jam as I was promised, although to be fair you can still get to the original site by clicking through to the feature presentation. But even that was evolving with new banners at the top just trying to take you elsewhere, it's like they knew this site was done with. And you remember that image map I told you about, well this is the point at which it was slightly rejigged to make everything its own link rather than that slightly archaic method of linking. The team were clearly still there in the background making tweaks to keep it up to date, although the press page is still trying to take us to the Mars Attacks website, a movie which also came out in 1996. By May the 10th 2000, the website was updated again, although this time the change was even more drastic. Now there was no Space Jam at all. Instead, the site would simply redirect you to WBMovies.com, a place designed to promote all kinds of new Warner Brothers movies. But at least nestled in there was a page of links that could take you to various other movie websites. Including Space Jam, ironically, which of course just put you back in a reoccurring loop of bringing you back here. Then suddenly, in October 2003, not even the loop could bring you peace. Spacejam.com simply stopped responding, returning a 301 error to anything that tried to contact it. It seemed like the dream was finally dead. However, this was not the case. Spacejam.com may have died, but the website lived on just in a slightly more obscure location. www.warnerbros.com slash spacejam slash movie slash jam.htm. This then was effectively a mirror of the original site. At the precise moment the original spacejam.com went offline, this mirror popped up. It's an archive, a continuation, and it stayed nestled here on this Warner Brothers site along with all kinds of other obscure links until 2010. During that time, nothing else really happened to it. There were no press updates, there was just silence. It sat quietly, finally able to enjoy peace. That is, until Reddit showed up. Today I learned that the Space Jam website is still up and it hasn't been updated since 1996. It's beautiful. Underneath, a comment from BBO Land reads, Somebody at Warner Brothers is going to get to work tomorrow and go what the flip? Where did all this traffic come from? And that is exactly what happened. Rolling Stone reports how some of the team who worked on the site were still there in 2010 and recall how people inside Warner Brothers were utterly shocked but also pleased to hear that a seemingly forgotten part of their website was now spreading around the internet like wildfire. By this time, the original copywriter, Michael Tritter, was now a senior vice president of interactive marketing with Andrew Stackler, his VP. He recounts how some idiot thought, well, that's not supposed to be there anymore, and there's all this traffic coming in. And actually deactivated the pages, mainly as it wasn't a monetized asset. He goes on to say, Andrew and I are like, what's wrong with you? Why would you? Going out of his way to find the staff member who deactivated it to make sure it was back up within a few hours. He goes on to add, If we had left the company, the site probably would not exist today. It would have gone down for good at that time. And as we know, that would have been an absolute crime. If you look at archive.org, you can actually see the uptick in page views represented through images of the site. Archive.org basically web crawls around the internet and follows links. The more links there are to a particular page, the more often that page gets imaged. A TechCrunch estimate at the time put the number of page views at half a million almost overnight off the back of that reddit post, so you can see why perhaps an executive decided that an unmonetized part of their infrastructure should be turned off, saving precious bandwidth and energy costs. However, from a marketing and reputational point of view, Stackler had definitely made the right call to get it reinstated fast. Within a few hours, a member of the reddit community had tracked down Jen Braun through her personal website. 
She had left Warner in 1999, was now living in Spain, but still working as a designer. So by Thursday, December the 30th at 8.57 in the morning, she found herself doing an AMA on Reddit for hundreds of intrigued web surfers. Did you ever go back and look at your old work and giggle at it? No, not really. It was good for the time. Did you ever miss the red text, sparkly background and the blinking comic sans? Definitely don't miss that stuff. Have you ever heard the term web standards? Were you around in 1998? Those were the web standards. She mentions that all her projects were fun, but the one that made her laugh the most was Joe's Apartment, a 1996 film based on a guy sharing an apartment with cockroaches. Nice. So then, after this point, it seemed inevitable that Space Jam was here to stay. In February 2016, even the original domain was back, although at this stage it simply redirected to warnerbrothers.com slash archive slash space jam slash index.html, a little flash site dedicated to selling a two-disc DVD special edition. Really guys? Flash? In 2016? In 2018, another redirect saw the original site return to spacejam.com nestled in a slightly deeper link before it was returned to the root of the site in 2019. But still, through all of this, the original website remained up in one way or another. It might have been moved about a bit, but it didn't put up a fuss. It sat quietly once again, almost returning to peace after its 2010 return to fame. That is, until the 2nd of April, 2021. On this day, the Twitter Space Jam status bot created by Colin Mitchell, which had now been doing God's work since November 2013, suddenly announced, Hmm, looks like Space Jam isn't online. Hopefully it's a fluke. What could it mean? What had happened? Had Space Jam finally been slam dunked into oblivion? Was this truly game over? Three days would pass. Three long days. Each day saw the bot continue to sound its mournful toll, each one more painful than the last. Until finally it was announced, Space Jam was still up. It was still present. It had simply moved to spacejam.com 1996. Maybe it was the flurry of excitement over the website some 10 years prior. Maybe it was just a time for a new generation. But whatever the reason, the site had once again made way for something new. A sequel to the original Space Jam movie. With the original index being replaced with this. Well, you know, it's not a patch on the original. People just don't put in the effort these days. But at least they didn't use Flash this time around. Regardless, it's now almost November 2022, and at present the original Space Jam website is still thankfully up and running. A testament to its original creators, a shrine to the 90s internet, and frankly a bit of stability in a world that has since become a bit too unstable for my liking. Until next time, I've been Nostalgia Nerd. Toodaloo. Everybody get up, it's time to slam now. We've got a real jam going down. Welcome to the Space Jam. Here's your chance, do your dance at the Space Jam. All right. All right. Ooh.